Welcome back to another video from Not Only Trout. If you haven't taken a moment, please go ahead and click subscribe for more fly tying videos. In this video, we're going to tie a craft fur minnow hollow fly style. In the vise, we have a partridge of reddish C prints hook in size two, that's model CS52. And we're using some classic waxed semper fly thread in six aught. You could also use some three aught if you want to build your dam a little bit easier going forward with the tying. So we'll tie in our thread right at the back end of the hook and I'll take a small clump of craft fur. You can see me cutting some off right here and you're gonna go through and preen out the, the butt ends, clear things out a little bit because there's a lot of under fur in this craft fur and it allows you to get a better tie-in point without building up as much bulk. So what you'll do is you'll go ahead and bring that up to your hook and measure out about two hook lengths. I like the two hook length mark. And then trim that your craft fur to that length. And you'll go ahead and tie in that clump right at the back end. And what you'll do is you'll let that wrap around the hook a little bit. You'll see me wiggle the craft fur to get that to go around the hook a little bit to give you a little bit more of coverage. And then go ahead and lock that down nice and tight. And now I'm just going through and cleaning up those butts, making sure that everything's locked down nice and tight. If you do want additional durability, especially for toothy fish, I'd recommend putting a, do a drop of super glue or Zapagap there and help fuse these fibers in place. Next, we'll go ahead and grab a Palmer chenille. This is a new product that hopefully will be added to the Not Only Trout website in the near future. What you'll do is you'll go ahead at this point and advance your thread one third the way up the hook so that we can have a demarcation point for where we're stopping tying this Palmer chenille. So go ahead and do nice touching wraps, preen your fibers back to try and trap as few of them as you possibly can. You'll go through, wrap all the way up to that one third point, and then you'll go ahead and you'll collect your material with a pin trap and just go ahead and get that material trapped down and do several tight locking wraps to be able to get that to hold into place. And then grab your scissors, trim the material out, and set that aside. Then go ahead and clean up your wraps, preen your fibers back, make it feel nice and pretty. And then go ahead and grab another clump of craft fur, about the same size as the previous one. And you'll go ahead and measure this out so that it ends up being about to the two thirds the tail length and trim your materials off at that point so you can start your first reverse tie or hollow tie-in point. So it's important to have your fibers pointing towards the front with the section that you're tying off at the back, kind of like you can see right there. And then go ahead and wrap that in, give it a couple of wraps, and then use your thumb to wiggle the fibers around, trying to get those fibers around the hook as evenly as possible and tie your fibers in nice and tight. This would be another perfect point if you wanna go for added durability to drop in a drop of super glue. Now use your fingers, or if you want, you can use a hollow pen or anything you want to preen those fibers back and hold them in place. The nice thing about craft fur is it's super easy to move back. And what you'll do is you go in and pull your, fret, your thread straight forward and then go vertically and make a thread dam right there to force the fibers back. And you can see how they're kind of spraying almost vertical. And the more you build that thread dam up, it's gonna push those fibers further and further back. So now we have a nice profile that goes down to about the two thirds length of our tail. And at this point, we're just gonna grab our Palmer chenille yet once again. And we're gonna put in a second layer of Palmer chenille right here. Same process, tie that in. And this time, you'll go another third the way up the hook, but if you measure just halfway down the hook from where your last tie-in was, that'll get you that third the way. And go ahead and wrap this in and build a nice clean body on that. One cool thing about craft fur is it does come in a lot of different colors. So you can mix and match this fly with different colors of Palmer Chenille and different colors of craft fur to build a bait fish minnow pattern of the color that you choose. So once you get this locked in, just go ahead and trim it nice and clean. And 
pull your fibers back and clean up your wraps a little bit just so you have a clear tie-in point. And then we'll go ahead again and grab some more craft fur. And you'll see we'll go ahead and measure out to about that two-thirds mark again, a little bit shorter than our previous bundle. Trim our hair down and get that tied in. Yeah, it's just like what happened with uh, with Keith and uh, that. Using the exact same stuff. process we did before. Make sure the fibers are facing the front. Use our thumb to migrate those hairs around a little bit for the, from the craft fur. And then lock things down nice and tight. Once you get that locked in, do the same process, do spread your hair, right now they're, they're, they're push it back the direction you want it to go. And get that as uniform as you can. And you'll see we have just a little bit of room left in front of the craft fur, between the craft fur and the eye of the hook. So you're gonna push that so back be, just so a little bit to give ourselves just a little bit more room. Build a small thread dam. And then from here, we're gonna add one final bundle of craft fur. And on this final bundle, we're not gonna clean out the under fur nearly as much. We wanna use that shorter hair to give us kind of a bulky bulkhead style fly. That's a big fly. one, that's a big one. You'll go ahead and measure your craft fur to where it goes right beyond the back end of the hook. Just keeping that teardrop shape in mind. So once you trim that up, get everything aligned and you'll tie it in so the can, exact same way with that reverse it. tie. As I mentioned with Todd, and you'll kind of overlap a little bit on the like, previous hey, like section because you don't have a whole lot of room to tie like in on. And we'll make Wiggle that around so that you can get the entire hook covered and build kind of a we'll do. Yeah, I sent over that file equally you dispersed else, veil around the hook. Yep. And then once you do that, lock everything in place. As you can see right here, before I lock everything in place, I'm moving some of the fibers around, getting them where I want them to be. And then pull my thread forward, get it in front of the craft fur, and build up a small thread dam. Make sure that the profile looks good by preening the fibers back. At this point, there will be some flyaways that happen naturally. You can trim those out or hit them with a lighter very, very gently, and they'll singe away. At this point, go ahead, grab your whip finish tool, throw in a whip finish, and you'll have a completed fly. I absolutely recommend throwing in some head cement at this point or some UV resin to lock everything down in front and increase the durability on your fly. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. Tight lines, my friends. Get out and go fishing.